Hello and welcome to Weekend Projects, a Make Magazine video podcast. I'm Bree Pettis, your host, and every week I bring you a project that you can make over the weekend. This weekend, we're going to make a kite aerial photography rig, or a cap rig, as some people call it. I looked in Make Magazine Volume 1, where there's plans for making a simple one that's just one time. You go up and it takes one photo and then you bring it on down. And I've had this Vex Robotics kit around here for a while, and it's a remote control robot kit. So I'm thinking I'll make one where I can control the angle and the rotation of the rig and then be able to take pictures, as many pictures as I want, without having to bring it down. All right, you may have noticed that I don't have a kite here. That's because I don't have a kite. I'm going to need to actually get one, and I'm going to get a Sutton Flowform 30. That means it's going to have 30 square feet of raw lifting power. So here's version one of the Vex Robotics Kite Aerial Photography Rig. I've got it set up with the remote control here, the, the radio control, so that when I move this up and down, it moves the camera up and down. And when I move this left and right, it moves the entire rig left and right. See if I can avoid hurting myself here. Then when I go like this, and it takes a picture every time I do that. Let me show you a little bit about how radio control rigs work, just in case you've never used them before. The servos are the muscles of the operation here. The servos are what are making things turn back and forth. They're the things that are going back and forth. Now, there's two kinds that I'm using here. I'm using a motor module and a servo module. A motor module just turns around one way or another. A servo module is one where you can actually control the actual angle. I think you have about like 100, 120 degrees worth of controllable angle with a, a servo module. The next module we've got here, the next thing to show you is the microcontroller module. Now the microcontroller module is this thing right here. Now I've plugged and I've taped all the servos into this. This is the, this is the brains of the operation. This is the place that takes the, uh, the information from the controller and then tells the servos what to do. This right over here is the actual antenna. This is the receiver. This is where the information comes from the radio and goes into the microcontroller brain. And of course, it wouldn't work at all if it didn't have batteries. I've got a number of uh, batteries in here that are, you'll just have to trust me. There's a bunch of batteries in there. So now you know a little bit about how remote control operation works. Now it's time to go fly this kite. I need to go buy the biggest kite I can, see if we can get this rig up in the air. What I've got here is a Picavet suspension system. And what that means is both of these ends will be attached to the kite string. And no matter whether, what the angle of the kite string is, the suspension rig here will always keep it so that it's level. We've got some issues with wind consistency and lift. We've got kind of a heavy contraption here in very light winds. Let's see what we can do. Clearly the trick is don't use steel because we, we got it up about 40 feet up and then it just didn't want to go up any higher and it kept coming down. So we've got to lighten the chassis and then we're going to come back and give it another shot. Sometimes you just need the right tool for the job. When I decided to switch from heavy steel to lightweight aluminum, I knew I was going to have to drill some holes and so I bought this drill press. Now this drill press is awesome. I bought it used. Now one thing to be careful with when you're using a drill press is that when you're drilling into metal, the metal will become very, very hot. It got very hot and I actually touched it and I ended up burning two fingers. Ow! Ah! The only thing that gave me any relief was sticking these fingers in a little cup filled with aloe vera juice and an ice cube. It's actually healed since this morning, but be careful when using heavy machinery that gets hot. I'm really proud of how much weight I've been able to lose off this rig. I switched from steel to aluminum here, and that saved a lot of weight. And then I also switched from double A's to triple A's, and that saved like a quarter of a pound just right there. I've added this chopstick here for the antenna, and this will also help so that when it comes down, it'll land on the chopstick first rather than the camera. All right, this is almost two pounds less than my old rig, and so I'm sure it'll fly now if I can just get some wind. 
Oh, I also switched these rings out. These rings I was using, they were heavy steel, and just by switching the rings out, I've saved like almost half a pound. So, let's go. Let's go see if we can get it up in the air. It's actually working. It's way up there. The wind is blowing. I'd say it's maybe 200 feet up, and I've been snapping pictures. It's so far away that I'm not actually sure what I'm taking a picture of or which way that, that the camera is going. There is nothing more satisfying than making something, having it not work, and then fixing it up so that it does work. I'm Bree Pettis from Make Magazine, and you've watched another Weekend Projects. Have a great weekend.